Now, retired General Michael Flynn had a lot to say when it came to his accusations about Hillary Clinton, but he clammed up when asked about events surrounding January 6th. General Flynn, do you believe the violence on January 6th was justified? Is that, can I get a clarification? Is that a moral question or are you asking a legal question? I'm asking both. I said, I, I said, do you believe the violence on January 6th was justified morally? Take the fifth. You believe the violence on January 6th was justified legally? Fifth. General Flynn, do you believe in the peaceful transition of power in the United States of America? The fifth. It is just so damning. Everything, that long paw, everything yeah, is, is just uh, puts a former general just in the worst possible light. He can't even say that, that, that he supports a peaceful transfer of power. What happened to this guy? Well, staff writer for The Atlantic, Barton Gelman, writes about that testimony in his new piece, and he says this, quote, it was a surreal moment. Here was a retired three-star general and former national security advisor refusing to opine on the foundational requirement of a constitutional democracy. Flynn had, sworn, Flynn had sworn an oath to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Rule of law had been drilled into him for decades in the Army. Now, by invoking the right against self-incrimination, he was asserting that his beliefs about lawful succession could expose him to criminal charges. That could not be literally true beliefs. Uh, true beliefs, absolute protection under the First Amendment. But his lawyer might well have worried about where Cheney's line of questioning would lead. Let's bring in Barton right now with that new piece. What happened to Michael Flynn? This is a great question what to ask because, happened? you know, there are a lot of people that 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 I, I've looked up to for a long time in the military. Uh, a lot of people I consider to be great patriots that will tell you that in his time, before he went crazy, that General Flynn, and I heard this from one after another, was one hell of, 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 an, uh, of an intel operator. Uh, like, he was, he was a guy, I think it was uh, General McCaffrey, he said, he's a guy you wanted on your side in the past. Yeah, this is the thing. Think about what it takes to be a good intelligence officer. You need to have discernment, judgment, an understanding of facts, a respect for evidence. And the things that this guy says now out on tour around the country are just remarkably off the wall. You know, it's as, as though you're doctor started telling you to uh, drink, you know, a, a lead diet because uh, that's that's the new key to health. He, he has endorsed the craziest election conspiracies, the, the idea that uh, the Italian government used military satellites to change votes in election machines uh, from Trump to Biden, uh, the idea that COVID wow. is a wow. hoax. Uh, created by a, a malevolent global conspiracy uh, and that the vaccines implant chips to, for, for mind control, uh, he, he's just he's just fallen off a cliff. Yeah, so let me ask you, Barton, um, did you find a particular point or people close to General Flynn find a particular point where he was radicalized. I, I mean, if it just just to, you, you read general news articles, you you hear that he he. I mean, this guy was appointed by Barack Obama, but he got turned sideways with Barack Obama. Was there something that happened during that time uh, that 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 radicalized him? Uh, some some uh, disillusionment with Moment. either the Obama administration or the way wars were being fought, or was, or is it just a hunger for power? And he, he and he, he saw he could get that with Donald Trump. So one theory is that he was always prone to conspiratorial thinking, 
uh, or to political extremism, but he was confined by the structure of the army, uh, by uh, the bosses he worked for, particularly uh, Stanley McChrystal. Uh, but if you had to pick a moment uh, when he changed, it would probably start with the day he was fired. Uh, as head of the Defense Intelligence Agency. Uh, he had come in, got his third star uh, to run this agency of 15,000 people. And although it's in the Defense Department, it is uh, primarily a civilian agency. Uh, and he'd create all, all kinds of havoc in the DIA. Uh, morale was plummeting. Uh, he was uh, judged to be insubordinate uh, to his bosses in the Pentagon. Uh, and they fired him. Uh, a year before his term was going to end. And the trauma of that failure after a lifetime of success, I mean, you don't get to be a three-star general without being pretty good at your job. Uh, that, that trauma and then his firing again by Trump mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, as national security advisor, his prosecution by the FBI uh, created uh, uh, just a, a huge meltdown of his personality. 